Hello again, Rail fans. It's 6 in the morning, and my dad and I are headed to CSX's Yeoman Yard in Tampa. Today is Friday, September 11th, 2020, and at 6 a.m., it's already in the low 80s. It's going to be a hot one today. After grabbing a quick breakfast, we pull up to 78th Street to see Q441, the nightly mixed freight from Waycross to Tampa, creeping its way into the yard. The train usually would arrive here around 1 in the morning, but engine trouble in Baldwin delayed this train by four and a half hours. The locomotives were already in the middle of the yard, but we caught them coming out on the south side to back their contest into a different track. In the lead, one Jeevo, and in the second position, an SD40-2, with one DPU right before the loaded auto rack cut. A DPU is short for Distributed Power Unit. It's part of E. Hunter Harrison's Precision Scheduled Railroading, or PSR. Having a locomotive mid-train helps the drag of the cars and build momentum for a train like Q441, who today is over 10,000 feet and mostly loaded. About 10 minutes pass and here is K315. K315 is a once weekly delivery of empty hoppers from Rockport Yard to Mosaic's Lake Wales Phosphate Plant in the Bone Valley. Here at Yeoman, a light engine move from Winston Yard stops for a crew change. In about half an hour, the new crew will take the locomotives down the Palmetto Sub, pick up hoppers, and take them to the plant to be loaded. Then, next week, a second K315 will take the loaded hoppers down to the port of Tampa Bay to be loaded onto huge cargo ships. We left K315 at Yeoman as the new crew hadn't even been called yet, and after hearing the dispatcher send out 0738 out of Winston Yard, we scurried over to Wabash Avenue. Here, the double main line of the CSX A line splits off to the north. We're just west of Lakeland Connection and in the middle of what feels like a public city. Wherever you look, there's some kind of warehouse or distribution center for Publix. In only a couple of minutes, here comes 0738 with empty rock hoppers destined for Davenport. Those black hopper cars are custom made for Martin Marietta's Mineral Distribution Yard in Davenport. It's one of the few customers that 0738 will serve today. He'll come back in the afternoon with those cars loaded with rock and they'll probably end up on the front of Q452's consist in the following days. Next stop is Lakeland Connection. We're right next to Lakeland's McCall Park, where new dirt, grass, and roads are being planted and paved to cover up the old Atlantic coastline's Lakeland Yard. The yard was torn up in the late 80s, but the city of Lakeland still didn't want a huge grassless field in the middle of their new urban area. So a community park will now fill the vacant land that the ACL left behind so many years back. A green signal greets us, and soon 0710 calls a clear signal at 10th Street. We're on the Vitus subdivision, and after switching some customers, 0710 gets permission to back onto the A-Line to complete some more local jobs.
0710 would be a while, so we drifted to Plant City, where CSX 070911 was asking for permission to cross the Plant City Diamond. We found him at the Alexander Street Crossing, where he had just finished switching boxcars at General Shale, a building supplies distributor. After coupling to the rest of his train, 0709 was ready to depart northbound. We decided to chase him for a bit and caught up to him at the south end of Plant City Siding. He had to stop once again to get permission to switch the freezer, as rail fans call it, or Americold and Sweet Life Farms. First, he had to pull in front of the industrial spur switch, line the switch for the spur track, then finally back into the spur and drop off the loaded produce cars and pick up the empties. stay to see the whole switching operation as it'd take a good hour before 0709 would be back onto the main line and there was one more train I really wanted to catch. 
Pulling into Plant City, 0710 kept calling signal after signal on his speedy trip back to Tampa. He might have been trying to beat those rain clouds. In Plant City, I've only ever caught Amtrak's going this fast, so to watch a little GP38-3 flying across the diamond, boy, it was a sight to see. The dark rain clouds began to close in, so we called it a day. I hope you enjoyed this outing of catching locals, and I hope to see you all on the high iron again soon. But until we meet again, this is Christian from Multicolor Films, end of transmission.